And finally, um, Rome wasn't built in a day and <coughs> you are not going to necessarily implement a palliative approach in your residential care facility uh, in a very short period of time. So my biggest tip would be um, review what it is that you're currently doing, get your working party together, and then as a group decide where are you going to start. And you may want to pick one of those key processes. A lot of people start at the end. So a lot of people start with the end of life care pathway, which seems counterintuitive to start with the end of life care pathway instead of advanced care planning. But often that makes sense to people because that's the, the, the bit that usually sends people to hospital. And so that might be the area where you want to focus on first. You want to stop people being inappropriately transferred to hospital if that's what's happening in your place. So you might want to start with the end of life care pathway. You might have advanced care planning down pat, and you don't need to do that. Um, you don't need to do any more training than that. You just need to review what's happening, make sure that everybody is comfortable with the processes that's going on. So you could move on then to palliative care case conferences um, or, as I say, the end of life care pathway. Celebrate your achievements. Have a look and, uh, you know, you might even want to do some clinical audits about what goes on in your place. And if you're doing something really well, whether it's one of those symptoms or one of those processes, share that with people. You know, so that, look, we're doing a fantastic job here with, with this particular um, aspect of providing a palliative approach. So let's, you know, now look at what else we might do. So, so make sure that your staff feel that, you know, that they are being recognised for what it is that you're doing. Look at, um, at the uh, announcements that are coming out. The Productivity Commission um, recommendations came out last week. There's $20 million for specialist palliative care services to support aged care. There's no detail about how that might happen. It might be positions, it may be education and training. We don't know yet, so you, know, you need to make sure that you're linked in with the consortium people here about how that might look. Um, or any other project money. There's lots of uh, opportunities sometimes to get you know, project money or to work with universities um, to actually get small amounts of money and to make some changes. So you know, make sure you tap into um, any resources that you can to help you along the way. And that's all I've got to say, but I'm really keen to hear from you um, about um, any questions that you have and all your experiences. And I was talking to Mary Jo uh, earlier, who's uh, manager of a low care only facility. Um, and you know, that, that she's really at the pointy end because that's, that's, that's a real hard gig if you're the low care only place. But she told me that, you know, it, it is possible for people to die in her facility. Not everybody. And I think you have to be pragmatic if you're working in that setting and you're low-care standalone. Um, but, you know, how, how is it that you're going to manage in your place? Um, you know, what do you do now? So Francis has got a roving microphone there. <laughs> 